this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and I'm here with my lovely assistant Kayla, one of the SSL Family Kids. Hi. And today we're going to be going through just a few of the, the tips and tricks and things that I've learned with the swirl filter, um, kind of some of the uh, ways to get it clean, keep it clean, uh, and also kind of how well it's been working. I've had it in the system now for at least four or five months, and uh, it's been working very well. So I'm going to actually take you in close to the inside and show you kind of off top some of the things that I've um, put in place here to uh, help clean the bottom of the swirl filter out and then also some design changes that I've added to the drain and, and waste plumbing here and talk a little bit about that. Okay, so this is the bottom of our swirl filter here and as I described in uh, the actual system design or the swirl filter design video, this is basically just a 55 gallon drum flipped upside down so that I have the bungs available at the bottom of the swirl filter and then I've just used some male three quarter inch adapters to um, pipe right out of those bungs out to a valve here where I can drain off the waste. So as the waste collects in the bottom of the swirl filter, I can drain it off right here. <clears throat> One of the things that I thought um, I was going to be able to do is keep up with that wastewater. I'd be able to come down here once a week, you know, siphon off a bucket full of the wastewater, take it out to our garden. Well, in the winter, winter time, I still need to clean that swirl filter out, and I just don't have enough house plants or places to put the, the waste runoff from the swirl filter. So I had to design a better system here to um, dump it off to waste. And I would recommend that if you're designing something like this indoors, that you have a way to dump your swirl filter off to waste. Um, so I just kind of changed some of the plumbing up here. So this actually now goes straight down out to a drain that we have here in the basement. Um, and I also still have the option of putting a watering can under the pipe here. Uh, so I can take some of the wastewater up to our indoor plants and stuff like that whenever I need it. Um, I still have an extra valve to add at the bottom here to make the um, watering can portion of it work, but right now it's just siphoning out to waste. So if you're looking at building something like this, I would definitely make it so you can use either one and have a, have a way to dump it out to waste because that's been something I needed to, to uh, add into the system. Okay, so this is just an overhead view of the swirl filter here, and I've just got the incoming water from the fish tanks here, and this just creates that swirl effect. Um, this is the outgoing pipe that goes out to the grow beds, and this is just a little bit of an overflow, just in case there's a little extra water being pumped in here, like there is currently. Um, that goes straight down into the sump tank below and just keeps getting circulated through the system. Now what I've added here, because the bottoms of these 55 gallon drums, or the top in this case, that's on the bottom, is uh, they're not, they don't slope right to one of those drains. There's actually a little bit of a lip here uh, around our, the drain. So a lot of the sediment gets trapped in the bottom here and, it, and it, won't, it won't get sucked into that drain. So I've added a fitting and it's a small piece of hosing and I'll get that pulled out. This just kind of stores off to the side here. And this is just a piece of garden hose. I have a hose clamp um, to attach it here to this wooden dowel. And all I do is turn on my drain valve below that I showed you earlier. And this acts as kind of like a little pool vacuum. Basically, I just use it to take this uh, dowel and suck all that stuff off the bottom of the barrel. And this could work in a full-size swirl filter if you have a big 55-gallon drum or a smaller bucket one. Uh, no matter what you have, this is a really handy way to just kind of clean the bottom. So I'll kind of show you how that works here. And so you're not going to get every single piece off the bottom, but it definitely makes it easier to clean this out. And when I'm done, I just kind of stretch this over and stick it on the side of the swirl filter there. Um, and it just stays attached, so I don't need to take it out or in. This makes cleaning this thing out just a, a way, way, way easier um, than trying to, you know, drain it and clean out the bottom or anything like that. I can get that stuff off the bottom, you know, once a week, twice a week, um, and uh, get this thing cleaned out real good. You don't want to leave all that sediment sitting on the bottom because it does turn anaerobic. There's not a lot of oxygen down there at the bottom of this barrel, at the bottom of this roll filter, and it gets real, real nasty smelling. It smells like sewage or something. So you want to keep that cleaned out as much as possible. The swirl filter itself works excellent. Um, it captures probably 80% of the solid uh, waste and fish food and stuff like that that, um, that uh, gets into the system. The rest of it goes into the grill beds, definitely cycles through, and you know a lot of it will get dissolved over time. I do plan to add my composting worms, my red wigglers, into the grill beds. Uh, I was just kind of waiting for enough root matter and organic matter to kind of get established into in our grill beds before I did that. And so I'll be adding some compost worms in 
to help uh, get rid of the other, uh, whatever, you know, 20 to 25 percent of uh, stuff that gets through here and uh, clean out those grow beds even further. All right, so as you saw in that last clip there, the, the sides or walls of that barrel and the swirl filter have a lot of algae growth on them. So uh, one of the things that I uh, had a problem with originally was I didn't have any of this mylar. This, this is just cheap emergency blankets. It's a mylar cloth. Um, in between, I didn't have any of this in between the swirl filter and these grow beds, and so a lot of that light was bleeding through into that swirl filter, and a lot of algae was getting you know, growing in there. Um, so anytime you have any light and water together, you're going to get algae growth. So one of the things I would always recommend is if you're using any of these, these, opaque, these barrels, um, make sure you paint them with some type of dirt color paint, um, especially if they're outside and you get sunlight on them. Uh, you know, use some of this stuff to wrap them in or keep them separated from your grow beds and far enough where they won't get a lot of light on them. Uh, same with the fish tanks because you're always going to end up getting algae growth that way. So one of the changes that I made, um, so once I get this up, this cleaned out, this growth filter, I just take a brush and, and scrub those edges off. I shouldn't have any more algae growth in there. All right, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to throw a few tips and tricks that I've, things that I've kind of learned with the swirl filter here, having it installed now for a few months. Um, it's been working really well. I, I can't imagine not having it. Um, as I said in my last video, I really do think that it's necessary to have a swirl filter in your system, especially if you're going to end up having a lot of fish. Um, you know, compost worms and thorn worms in the grow beds is definitely a great idea, and it will they will break, be able to break down quite a bit of that waste. But they're not going to be able to break down all of it. And if you allow all that waste to get into these grow beds, eventually you're going to end up having to clean them a lot more frequently than you will if you don't have a swirl filter. The other advantage to this is that you can siphon off a lot of that the fish waste that's getting collected and collected in there for use in your gardens outside. In the summertime, I you know came with five gallon buckets full of this this water out of the swirl filter every couple days and put it out in the garden. It, it was it made a huge difference in, the, in in our plants outside. So. Just for that purpose alone, I love having the swirl filter. So um, <clears throat> let me know what you guys think. Throw some comments below, good things, bad things, uh, that you think I should do differently. I'd love to hear any type of comment that you have. So hit thumbs up on the video if you at least found it informational. I always do appreciate that. And subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along. We try to do aquaproducts updates at least every two weeks, sometimes more. Uh, and we've got lots of other sustainable projects and other types of things going on around the homestead here. So uh, follow along if you like, uh, you're into that kind of thing. Um, other than that, I really appreciate you watching today. Have a good one.